Hello everyone, it's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library and I am back this week with another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about spiders. Now for our song this week, I think that you can help me out. Do you know a song about a spider? Did you say the big giant spider? No? Did you say the medium-sized spider? No. Did you say the itsy bitsy spider? That's the one I know. Let's sing it together. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Now we're going to sing the variations that I mentioned. So I love swapping out verses for favorite songs. It's one of my favorite early literacy practices. So we're going to do the big giant spider first. So instead of making a teensy weensy spider with your fingers, we're going to make a big giant spider with our whole body. Okay. The big giant spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the big giant spider went up the spout again. So if we have an itsy bitsy spider and we have a big giant spider, what would a medium spider look like? Maybe like this. The medium sized spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the medium sized spider went up the spout again. So you can try that song with all sorts of different versions. You can do moods like the happy little spider and the sad little spider. And you could do speeds, the very fast spider, and the very slow spider. So try those out at home. Next, I'll be sharing with you a story. And this story is from Ghana, which is a country in West Africa. And it is a story about Anansi. And Anansi is one of the most famous spiders in the world. You may have heard of the spider called Anansi. You may have heard that he is a trickster, which is true, but you may not have heard that he is always very hungry, which is also true. One day, as Anansi was sitting down to his delicious dinner, he heard a knock at the door. He opened it, and there stood his friend Turtle. Turtle said, Anansi, what is that delicious smell? I have been working very hard, and I am tired and hungry. Can I join you for dinner? Well, Anansi did not want to share his dinner, but he knew that it is just not done to turn people away. He said, Yes, all right, Turtle. I am very hungry, but you may come in and share the delicious yams and rice that I made all for myself. Thanks, Anansi, said Turtle, and she came right in and sat down. As Turtle was about to start eating, Anansi said, Oh, Turtle! Just look at your feet. It is not polite to come to the table with dirty feet. Please go and wash them before you eat. Turtle looked at her feet and saw that indeed they were very dirty. She got up and walked to the sink to wash them. While she was gone, Anansi gobbled up all of the yams. When she got back, she said, Anansi, you have eaten all of the yams. And Anansi said, There is still plenty here for you. But Turtle, your feet are dirty again. Please go and wash them before you eat. Turtle looked at her feet in surprise, but it was true. She had had to walk across Anansi's dirty floor to get back to the table. She went again to wash at the sink. While she was gone, Anansi ate up all of the rice. Turtle came back to find all of the food had been eaten. Anansi, she cried, you have eaten all of the food. You have not left even a grain of rice for me. Well, said Anansi, Maybe next time you will come to the table with clean feet. 
Turtle went home to the bottom of her pond, very disappointed and very hungry. I'll show that trickster a nuncy, she said. She sent him an invitation for dinner the next day. Ooh, exclaimed Anansi, Turtle has invited me for dinner. She is a very good cook. I will get to eat well without lifting a leg to help. The next day, Anansi set out for Turtle's pond. When he got there, he looked down and saw that she was setting the table. It's almost ready, Anansi, she said. Come on down. Anansi tried to jump into the water, but he just floated. He could hear Turtle laughing from the table below. <laughs> Turtle is trying to trick me, he said, but I will make it down to eat her dinner. He looked around the pond and found some rocks, which he put into his pockets. This time, when he jumped, he sank down to Turtle's table. Anansi, said Turtle, welcome to my home. Thank you for joining me for dinner. This food looks delicious, said Anansi. I am very hungry. And he reached for a plate of greens. Anansi, said Turtle, you are welcome here. But don't you know it's very rude to wear your coat at the dinner table? Please take it off so we can have a nice meal together. Anansi knew it was very rude to wear his coat. He very slowly and carefully took it off. And what do you think happened? That's right, he floated right back up to the top of the pond. And he never tried to trick Turtle out of her dinner again. The end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Now I'm going to pass it on to Mr. Michael from the Nature Center to tell you more about spiders. See you next time. Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Perez with the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. I want to welcome you to this week's edition of Discovery Club. I want to thank Miss Angela with the Fort Worth Public Library for sharing that story with the puppets and doing that song. I know our younger audience has really enjoyed it. So thank you again, Miss Angela. Now we're going to transition and talk about spiders. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I promise. Is everything safe? There's a screen between you. You don't need to leave. Everything's good. I know some people are afraid of spiders, had bad experiences, so let's all take a deep breath, sit back down. There you go. Good. Great. Thanks for joining back in. Uh, so we're going to talk about spiders. Now we're going to talk about what a spider is and isn't. We're going to talk about the body parts of a spider, talk about the benefits of spiders, and then we're going to go through some photos of some of the species we have in our area. So that's what we're going to be talking about today in Discovery Club. Now, what is a spider? What isn't a spider? So I have a model of a spider here. It's a pretty big one, right? It's not real, it's a fake spider. So, what is a spider? Well, we know spiders are not insects and some people will actually confuse the two. No, so let's talk about why they're not insects. In fact, they are considered arachnids. Can you say arachnid? Great. So arachnids have eight legs, not six legs like an insect. So let's count them real quick. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they have eight legs, not six. Now you may look at this and say, oh, there's some legs right there. Actually, those are really important to holding their food, uh, holding uh, their mouth parts are when they're eating, they can hold uh, with those. So those are not, not considered legs at all. A couple of other parts that dis distinguish them as arachnids and not insects is the amount of body parts. Now, arachnids have two body parts. Uh, insects have three. So insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And we will be talking about insects uh, in future Discovery Club programs. But right now, we'll focus on the spider, and it has two body parts. It has an abdomen, which is what I'm holding right here, the bottom part. Here's the abdomen, and this top part is called a cephalothorax. That's a long word. That's a big word. So let's, let's slow it down and have you repeat after me. A cephalothorax. Great. 
Uh, cephalothorax thorax uh, actually is where the legs are attached to the head. Well, not the head, but where the eyes are inside, where his brain is, and then also these structures here. These, which I haven't mentioned, are fangs. Now, spiders do have venom, and they use that to subdue their prey, uh, defend themselves. So this is where their venom comes from. These fangs here. So that's another part of there they are. Another part of the spider's body. So eight legs, two body parts. One, the bottom part is called the abdomen, and the top part is called the cephalothorax. Now, on the abdomen, there's another part that's really important, and it's these these projections here. Those are called spinnerets, and what they do is allow whenever uh, a spider is making a web. Uh, it allows it to manipulate that web and so they construct a web and I'm gonna go ahead and put my my spider down real quick and go over webs now spiders make webs for various reasons okay they use those spinnerets to make their webs so they can capture food or when they lay eggs or a life make a lifeline now I have a paper here I could uh, don't mind that it's backwards we're not going to focus on the words as much as we're going to work focus on the photos here uh, this was uh, taken out of Growing Up Wild. It's part of the Project Wild uh, suite of curriculum. So Growing Up Wild, they have a, a, a lesson on spiders and spider webs. So there are different types of spider webs, and we said why they make those spider webs so you can get track their, their food sources for most spiders. Now we'll get to that in a second. So we have orb weavers. They build the, your usual circular uh, web where they're trying to get things to fly into it. Uh, we'll talk about that and show you some pictures, some orb weavers a little bit later. Uh, then the second one here you have, it's called a triangle or a funnel web, okay? A lot of times you see those on the ground, these funnel webs, there's an opening, it's a long tunnel, and then the spider's usually sitting at the very beginning, so when something gets on that funnel web, it starts moving around and gets stuck like the orb, uh, orb uh, web there too. They feel that movement, and then they come out and ambush and get their prey. And then you also have right here, which is called a sheet web. It's just almost like a hammock between like two branches of a tree, two limbs, um, trying to capture prey that way. And then you have your, what you would see around your house, maybe those cobwebs are also called a tangle web, uh, where spiders will make those. And it's really hard for something to get, uh, get out of there once they get all tangled up. Now you may ask or wonder, well, they build these webs, they construct all these webs, well, how do they get out of it? How does the spider not get stuck? Well, they have the ability to, to create some sticky webs and non-sticky webs. Also, they have the ability to walk and maneuver stuff that, of course, they know uh, so that they can get around uh, the sticky parts. And then lastly, uh, kind of, not talking about webs, but spiders who don't use webs, uh, there are some that just ambush their prey. They'll just sneak up on them and actively hunt their prey. And we'll learn a little bit about those when we uh, go through the photos that I've taken for you. So we talked about what a spider is. It's called. It's an arachnid. Arachnids have eight legs. They have two body parts, an abdomen and a cephalothorax. They have fangs, appendages that help hold their food. They have spinnerets so they can build those webs. And the last thing I want to mention is their eyes. They're always watching. Always watching you. All those eyes. A uh, little quote from the monsters eat there. Um, so they have eight eyes. Uh, so they have a really good uh, vision. They can see very well. That's why it's hard to kind of sneak up on them. Uh, not all of them have eight eyes. There's some that may have six, usually in an even number. Uh, but most do have the eight eyes. So it allows them to see and to get prey and also avoid predators. So now let's talk about the benefits of spiders. Spiders are so beneficial. I know when we say spiders, we get a little nervous. We may not like spiders, we had a bad experience. But I want you to understand the importance of spiders. So hopefully you can maybe get past that fear and be more open to be accepting of spiders uh, that may be near you. Now, there are four things I wanna talk about as far as why spiders are important. Number one, spiders are important because they help control pests that we may uh, have around our, our backyards, like if we have a garden or farmers have crops. Spiders are very inf are important because they can eat those pests uh, such as harmful caterpillars and other insects that may destroy crops and plants. So, uh, so that they help individuals, they help people out. Uh, so that's important. Number two, 
their food source, their food source for other animals. Birds, lizards, uh, like in the desert or dry areas, like small mammals, they'll eat um, the, spider, the spiders as well. So they're a f source of food. They're part of that network, the food web, if you will, and they play a major role in that. Thirdly, uh, they are eating each other. So as I've said before in a past Discovery Club, when we talk about alligators, you don't want to have one of a certain species just dominate a certain area because if you have too much of something, it can cause a problem. You can deplete the resources around them. Well, same thing with spiders. You don't want to have too many spiders, so they actually eat each other. So it kind of helps uh, keep a balance within their population as well. And then the last thing is, uh, which I haven't said, I, I did mention they have fangs, so which means they have venom. Spiders have venom. They can inject, uh, subdue prey, and defend themselves and so forth. But that venom is very important for researchers who are trying to find cures to diseases. So they use that venom as a way to find cures for diseases so that we can rid, of, rid the world of those particular uh, diseases and um, be healthy and not have those and avoid them. So uh, spider venom is very uh, important for that research. So you can see uh, spiders are important. They may look creepy and you know crawl around and but they're benefiting, they're eating other spiders. They're eating those pests that you may like. They can potentially find a cure, be the, the reason for a, a disease to be cured. Uh, and they help uh, people who garden and farmers who grow crops and so forth. So you can see the big picture, they're very, very helpful. So with that being said, we're gonna now transition and talk about the different species that we may have in our area. So I've taken uh, several photos of spiders in our area and uh, staff as well to show you and talk a little bit about them as well. So you'll learn a little bit about their uh, hunting strategies, uh, what kind of webs they, they make. We'll talk about uh, scientific names and common names, a little bit about that. Uh, so we're going to transition and uh, go through some photos and uh, learn about the different species that we have uh, across our area. This spider is called a bold or a daring jumping spider. And we'll talk a little bit about its name in a second. But these spiders are found in our area on fence posts, picnic tables, just around, just about everywhere. Very common. Uh, these spiders are different than other spiders in that they don't set up webs to catch their food. In fact, they hunt and stalk their prey. And the jumping really helps them. In fact, researchers have said that they can jump anywhere from 10 to 50 times their body length which sounds like a lot, but if you look at the size of the spider, it's about the size of your pinky nail, a little bit, maybe a little bit bigger than that. But still, that's pretty helpful for them to find their food. Now back to its name. With a name like that, bold and daring, wonder where did they get that from? Well, every animal has a scientific name and a common name. Scientific name is a name that biologists and scientists from around the world recognize. A common name is like a nickname or more local, and this spider, whenever you look at its scientific name, whenever they're naming this spider, they saw how it jumped so far and so often that they gave it the name bold or daring because it made bold jumps and daring, daring jumps uh, going after food uh, and so forth. So that's where it gets the name bold and daring jumping spider. Now this is a wolf spider. Wolf spiders are very common in our area. You can find them in your backyards, local parks. Uh, we find them here at the Nature Center as well. You can see the brown coloration and the little striping there. Helps you identify it as a wolf spider. Now these spiders are very similar to the bold jumping spider in that they actively hunt their prey. They don't set up webs to capture their food. In fact, when scientists were naming this spider, they named it a wolf spider because of that very reason. The fact that it hunted actively for its food. Now they don't hunt in packs like wolves. They're actually pretty solitary. So keep your eyes open for the wolf spider and you might find it in your backyard. This spider is called a green link spider. This is one of the more beneficial spiders because it likes the harmful caterpillars and insects that destroy plants in our gardens and crops in the fields. So this is a very beneficial spider. Now when you look for it, it's pretty obvious when you find it it's that lime green coloration in fact in the scientific name uh, green is in its scientific name it translates into the word green the lynx part is much like the wolf spider in that it actively hunts its prey it will jump and pounce on its prey like a lynx 
And lynx is like a bobcat, actually. So you can kind of get an idea as to why it's called a lynx. So that's the green lynx sp spider. And I encourage you to go to your gardens or local park with some wildflowers and look on the tops of those flowers and look and see if you find this bright green spider that's helpful to farmers and gardeners. This is one of my favorite spiders to see at the nature center. This spider here is a type of orb weaver, very different than those spiders we talked about earlier that are active hunters. These spiders will put up a web with the hopes of capturing food. Things will fly into their web or climb into their web and they get stuck. And then the spider wraps its body up and has a meal. Now this spider has a common name, well many common names, and a scientific name. Scientific name is Argiope, which is translated to silver face because it looks like it has a silver face, but also has lots of common names. Some of the common names are yellow garden spider, yellow and black garden spider, golden garden spider. It can also be called the zigzag spider, zipper spider, and the riding spider because of its web. It has a series of well, it looks like a bunch of Z's or a zipper from the top to the bottom of its web. So very unique. So keep your eyes open for this type of spider. This spider is called an orchard orb weaver. I wanted to show you this spider to give you another example of an orb weaver, a type of spider that builds a web in order to attract food so things can fly into it and climb into it and have an easy meal. I also wanted to share this one with you because we talked about the mouth parts of a spider earlier. Well, this type of spider is considered a long jaw, meaning its mouth parts are really long uh, to help capture food and so forth. So orchard orb weaver, beautiful spider. Just wanted to share that with you. So the spiders we've talked about so far, we talked about orb weavers who build webs to capture their food. We talked about a couple of species that actively hunt and pounce on their prey. But this spider gets its food differently. This is a type of trapdoor spider. They build a tunnel or a hole in the ground and a cover like a door. And what they do is they sit at the front of their door, if you will, and wait for something to walk by it. As it walks by it, it jumps out of the door, pounces on its prey, and pulls it into uh, the hole. So this is a really unique way to capture your food and a very smart way to capture your food and to be camouflaged and sneak up on their prey. So this is a trapdoor spider. I think this spider is really fascinating. It actually looks like another animal. Now when you look at those front legs and see how long they are and how they curve and come to the front, can you think of another animal it looks like? Well, if you're thinking of a crab, then you're thinking what I'm thinking. This is actually a crab spider. Those front legs are longer, elongated, and curved out to make it look like a crab. Kind of a cool appearance to this spider. You can find these spiders on your sidewalk and your local parks. This spider here can be found all across Fort Worth. In fact, it can be found all over the United States. Uh, typically found around October near Halloween. Yes, kids, this is not a real spider. It's a fake spider. This has probably been left over from one of our Trails and Treats events we've had over the years. And as I was looking for spiders to take a picture of, well, this one stood really still and allowed me to take a picture of it. So this is a fake spider. I just thought it'd be fun to include it. Now, we spoke earlier about the different types of spider webs we have in our area. You probably find them in your backyard and the trees and at the parks and places you visit often. I wanted to show you this picture I took after we had a little bit of drizzle and some mist and the water droplets, how they collected on the spider web. Thought it made for a really cool picture and a cool effect. I encourage y'all to continue looking in your backyards and your trees for all the different types of webs that the spiders are making. As we said earlier in the presentation, spiders are very beneficial and helpful to our habitats. They can eat pests, their food for other animals, and they eat other spiders. But we also need to be cautious in understanding that the venom that they have can pose a potential hazard to us. There are some spiders like this spider here, the Black Widow, who inject venom, or when they inject venom, can cause issues 
uh, can cause some pain and some swelling. This spider here is called a brown recluse and they too can do that as well, causing blisters and some swelling. So we want to be very cautious uh, around our spiders and definitely stay, stay away from them uh, and let adults uh, deal with spiders, but definitely want to appreciate them and look at them from a distance. What spider presentation would be complete unless there was a tarantula involved, right? Here is an image of a Texas brown tarantula. I took this picture when I was visiting one of our local state parks. I like tarantulas and I think most people do just because of their sheer size. They enjoy viewing them from a safe distance because of their size, much larger than some of the other spiders we have in our area. Most spiders in our area for that. Uh, these spiders can be seen crossing roads around sundown, very active uh, at that time. If you look at the spider, you see all those little hairs. Uh, in fact, one of its defenses is the ability to kick out some of those hairs that are located in the abdomen area. It's a way of defending itself and to get rid of any potential dangers. I encourage you to go out to your local parks and look for these spiders but view them from a safe distance. So through all those photos, you can see there's so many different species of spiders. We had trapdoor spiders, we had orb weavers, we had those that actively hunt and pounce on their prey, uh, trapdoor spiders, tarantulas, uh, plastic spiders. Uh, that was, I thought that would be fun to include as well. In fact, he's still up there on the sidewalk. Uh, so you can see there's lots of cool uh, spiders. And what my hope is, learning more about them, you leaving this program, going to read more. I know the library is going to have some books uh, online to, for you to read more about. And hopefully you can gain an appreciation uh, for these, these animals because they are so beneficial to us. And unfortunately, they get a bad rep uh, based on stories and even bad experiences and so forth. So hope you, you appreciate seeing them. Uh, learning about what a spider is and what it isn't, that it's not an insect, but it is an arachnid. Uh, and learn the different body parts, uh, like the cephalothorax, the abdomen, the fangs, the spinnerets, and the fact that it have eight legs and not six. So don't be confused with insects anymore. So thank you so much for tuning in this week. Uh, we're excited uh, to join with the Ford Public Library again next week. And we'll be presenting on owls. So definitely tune in for that presentation next week. So. I hope you have a good rest of the day and rest of the week, and we'll see you next Friday. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.